Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Jeff the IT Guy, and today I'm back with another video. We're going to continue looking at the HP Omen 30L. Today in this video, we're going to be taking out this measly peasant 6 core and putting in a 3700X. So if you've seen it in our last video, we put in an AIO. Today we're going to be upgrading the CPU. Um, this thing can handle a 65 watt CPU. The only one that you can buy off the street, or the only two, is like the 3600 and the 3700X. Um, and then you can get like a 3900 that's supposed to be 65 watt that HP sells. It's an OEM part, and so it doesn't have the, the higher TDP that like the 3900X has. But we're going to go ahead and put this in here, and we're going to see how much performance we gain and if that 65 watt limitation from HP limits how much performance we can get. Before I show you how to do this though, I wanna give a huge thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Havoc Shield. So thank you, Havoc Shield, and they offer small business cybersecurity from plan to proof. Is it time to get serious about cybersecurity in your small business? Havoc Shield standard plan includes penetration testing, endpoint security, dark web monitoring, and InfoSec policy templates. So go check out Havoc Shield. All their information will be linked in the description below. So let's talk about what we're gonna need for this video. First of all, you're gonna need an HP Thor uh, Omen 30L, like this one. You're gonna need a 3700X. This is a brand new one in the box. You're going to need some thermal paste. We're gonna be using Noctua NTH2, which is what we use here on the channel. You're gonna need a way to remove the thermal paste. We're all gonna use Noctua thermal paste for remover wipes. And you're also going to need some form of toolkit or screwdriver. We're going to be using the iFixit Pro uh, Tech Kit. This is the best one to get on the market. If you don't have one of these, go ahead and get you one. You're going to love it. All this stuff will be in the link below. So let's go ahead, crack this baby open, and let's change out some parts. All right, so this is going to be a super simple procedure. The only thing that we need to do really is we've got to go ahead, take our CPU cooler off, and then swap out the parts. Shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes. So go ahead, get your screwdriver out so that you can take off the cooler. Super simple to take off. It's even uh, got thumb screws on it. So just loosen it from side to side. Don't do one side completely to begin with. You want it to go diagonally so that you can relieve the pressure evenly across all sides. Once you get that done, you can go ahead and just use your fingers and get it. Give it a little wiggle. You don't want to pull it out of the socket. It might be stuck on there good. Okay. Just give it a little wiggle and then you'll be good to go. Put that to the side. We're gonna go ahead and take out one of these knock to a cloth. And you'll see why I like them so much. It makes it so, so simple do this. So super simple. It's like a glasses cleaning cloth. All you need to do, open it up, go ahead and wipe off that thermal paste. That's all you gotta do. Like that. Go ahead and wipe it off of your block as well. got a lot on here it can take a little minute to get it off nothing some elbow grease won't take care of okay once you make sure that it is good and clean like so just go ahead put that to the side we're gonna open up the box and pull out our new CPU. So you can use a knife on this or you can just use your uh, finger or whatever you want to do. Your uh, fix it kit, if you get one, comes with this little spudger. You can just pop it in there and go, boom, done, taken care of. This does come with a fan, you don't need it. Um, so you can, you know, sell your whole unit 
uh, or the you can sell the fan by itself. They're great fans. They go for quite a bit on eBay. So here's our new processor, the Ryzen 7 3700X. And what you want to do is open this up. Be careful. Okay. And down here on your CPU, you need to lift this retention arm, pull the CPU out by the sides, set it to the side. All right. You do not want to hurt these pins. Set this over to the side with this facing down. All right. And be easy with it because you do not want to take off or hurt one of the pins. It happens. It's super easy. They're super fragile. Okay. So once you do that, just set it. I'm putting it on the box that the other one came in. Go ahead and do that. Next thing you need to do is take out your CPU from your new one. Okay. Just open it up gently. Grab it by the sides as well like this. Super simple. Put it into the socket. A good way to remember how Ryzen goes into the socket is the Ryzen right here is going to be parallel with this block or there's a gold triangle down here in the corner. Once it's in, you don't have to push it in. You just let it drop. You can give it a little wiggle, not much. Put down the retention bracket and you're done. Go ahead, take the CPU that you pulled out in our case, the 3600, 3600, take it and put it back in this clamshell like so. This is going to protect it, so go ahead and do that. And you can actually resell this. These have quite a high price right now um, because there's not many in the wild. Everybody's wanting one. So you can go ahead, take that, put it back in the box that the 3700X came with, and you've got a 3600 and an awesome cooler. So next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and put our thermal paste on. Let's put it right here on the Z, like a you know, piece of rice, rice, something like that. Okay, and we just take our block and we put it back on. Line up the holes, it slides on, biggity boom, you're done putting it on. Now you gotta do is put on the little thumb screws, put, um, just tighten it enough on each side until it's on the screw post. That's as far as you want to go with it for now. Do it diagonally. This is going to ensure that you apply even pressure all across the CPU socket. Okay, once you do that, you can get your screwdriver out. It'll make it a little bit easier. Give it a couple turns on one side Go to the next side, give it a couple turns. Go to this side, give it a couple turns, and repeat this until it is tight. Do not try to over tighten it. Just as soon as you feel that it's tight, go ahead and stop. That's as far as you need to go. Okay. Once you've tightened it up, next thing to do is to put on the glass side panel, plug it up, and make sure that your work is finished and that it all works. Stay tuned, we're gonna look and see how much performance we gained in games and see if our temperatures are still under check with this Cooler Master AIO. All right, so we did it. We successfully changed the CPU from a 3600 to 3700X, going from six cores, 12 threads, to eight cores and 16 threads. It was a very easy process, as you've seen. Uh, you just need a couple things to make it happen. So let's talk about the performance. We ran the benchmarks. Uh, same benchmarks that we typically run here on the channel. So we ran OCCT for 15 minutes. Um, the temperature on it was 65, which was lower than the 3600. Um, and we'll talk about why I believe that is at the end. Uh, the frequency was 4.2 to 4.3 most of the time, but there were some dips and it was going like this. So we'll talk about that also. It, it all goes hand in hand. Uh, gaming performance, Borderlands 3, the 3600 had 90, uh, 1.93, so 92 FPS, the 3700X had 94, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the 3600 had 62, the 3700X had 65, Far Cry 5, 3600 had 91, 3700 had 93, Far Cry New Dawn, 3600 had 
91. The 3700X had 85. It's very weird to see that. Um, but it, that's the way it was on that one. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is 105 for the 3600 and then 107 for the 3700X. And so as you've seen, there's been a couple games that just a couple FPS switching from the 3600 to the 3700X. Um, notice that temperatures were a little bit lower, frequencies were a little bit higher, the, um, the sustained at, that could be due to silicon lottery and a lot of different things. Um, however, like I said, there's like issues with the, the frequency going up and down quite a bit, um, which we didn't see with the 3600. It would actually stay at that 4.1 uh, with water cooling. Um, and so the temperatures were very consistent with the 3600, but with the 3700X, it would hit like 4.3 and then it would jump down to four. And it would hit 4.3, jump down to four. Hit 4.3, jump down to four. And watching the, um, the wattage on the chip, whenever it would hit or get close to 65 watts, it would drop down and then it would go back up, drop down. So it was doing like this up and down jittery thing. And the reason for that is because HP has limited um, the amount of power that can go to the CPU to 65 watts. And so once it hits that 65 watts, the CPU will stop um, trying to hit that frequency and draw that amount of power and drop down. So it's throttling it, not based upon temperature, but actually throttling it based upon the amount of TDP or wattage that it's trying to draw, uh, in this case, 65 watts. And so that's why we've seen lower temperatures in my mind is because it's trying to hit that wattage plus, you know, based upon silicon lottery and everything. So we're seeing that extra five degree or seven degree lower temperatures due to it going up and down. So there is that. Um, so in conclusion, is it worth it to go from the 3600 to the 3700X. At the time of this, you can buy the 3700X for $280 online. If you're a Best Buy Rewards member, you know you can stack up points and actually take that off the cost. And so you can you know get that CPU for much less. Uh, if you can get the CPU, you know for $220 to $250 then I think you should definitely buy the 3700X and replace it because you can sell a 3600 right now on eBay for about $220. Because um, you can't find them out in the wild and that's really what people want to pay. They want to pay about the 220 range, get that 3600, and they don't want to pay 250 for the 3600X. So they'll go with the 3600 and they'll buy it and you're not out a whole lot of money, if any at all. And you gain the two extra cores and uh, four extra threats. Now, is it worth it to do this if all you're looking at is gaming? Well, no, it's not really worth it if all you're gonna do is game. You're gonna gain a couple FPS, but it's not really worth it. Like I said, unless you can just switch them out and there's really no extra cost for you um, if you get it on sale and stuff. But if you're just interested in gaming, no, it's not really, you're not gonna see that much going from the 3600 to the 3700X. However, if you're doing more intensive tasks like video editing and things like that, that's definitely a worthy upgrade and you're not gonna be out a whole lot of money. However, do be aware that you're gonna hit, even though the 3700X is a 65 watt chip, you're still gonna hit that threshold and HP's system is gonna pull it down. It's gonna, it's gonna keep it caged in. It's not gonna let it run wild. So if you've enjoyed this video, enjoyed you know, the benchmarks and learned how to do this and stuff like that, go ahead and leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Do you agree with my assessment that it was the uh, HP system putting it down to 65 watts? Do you think um, that, you know, I'm just dumb, don't know what I'm doing? Is this something you're gonna do? Also, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more great content. There's a lot of content here on the channel already. Uh, there's a little bit for everyone that's interested in technology, but we're gonna be doing a lot of great things. We're gonna continue looking at the HP Omen PC. We've got some case reviews coming up. We're gonna look at some cooling reviews and things of that nature as well as all the other goodies that we do here on the channel and some stuff that's directly aimed towards developers. And so go ahead, hit the subscribe button. You don't wanna miss any of this.
Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there and keep it real.